Okay, this is the most popular one right now. Uh, Chad of all. It is from the nice people at Tokyo Electric. Or the, the <laughs> Yes. Yeah, well, what else can you call them? Yeah. You know, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Fuji Industries, and I think Renault's also mixed up with it. So this is a picture of the uh, inlet of a uh, leaf. So here's the J1772 little tube that we've just been talking about. And here right next to it is this big ugly thing. It's got two big things to go directly to the battery and some communication. This top secret. So this is one where you probably can't just work your way in. The nice people at SAE, I don't know, they, they must run out of names because they're going to call it SAE J1772 Level 3 Fast DC Charge. They couldn't give it a whole new number. It's going to be completely separate. It's not going to be related to anything, but that's the way it is. The nice thing about this one is this is one of the connectors here. This is a regular J1772 Inlet, level two. So you can pop that right in anywhere. You can, you, well, you can see it right over there on the other side. But then down below it, there's this extra little bump with the two battery terminals and two extra terminals for some extra signal communication. One connector all of a sudden is doing two different tasks. It's, it's one common piece. Um, there's, prop, there's still a third one. There's a third system that's used in Europe uh, that allows uh, a high power charging with DC or three phase power, but it's losing ground really fast. The problem is the nice people at SAE haven't finalized this one. And just like the J1772, it took two years to get finalized. This one's going to take a while. Okay, some people worry about EMI and RFI. It's an electric car, there's power, there's magnetic fields. I know that people don't worry about it. Today, there are all kinds of safety standards, production uh, standards, and a lot of them really are coming out of the European CE standards. And they require and set the maximum amount of emissions, sensitivity, and things to uh, electromagnetic fi fields, uh, RF fields, all this stuff, um, and they're very stringent requirements. A major a car is made by a, a an automotive company is going to comply. You know, it's no more dangerous than your vacuum cleaner. Shielded wires, you know, they would have shielded wires. I hope most people for longer wire runs use shielded wires. Conversions are definitely going to have higher amounts of <coughs> EMI and RFI. A uh, couple quick mechanical issues here. Because the electric motor doesn't have any compression braking, and most conversions have a manual transmission, you got to remember to use your handbrake. It's really tough here in Florida when you know there's no hill or anything, you know. But uh, you know that. You now consider using chalks, especially at home or someplace like that where you know you might be working on it or something else might be happening. Vehicle weight. As soon as you talk to somebody, oh, I'm only 300 pounds over the gross vehicle weight. That book uh, from Richard Marx, he goes into pages about why you shouldn't ought to do this. Okay, uh, bigger brakes, yeah, might, you might stop, but you're losing a lot of the characteristics of the car as soon as you start overdoing these things. Weight and balance, that's another one. It's all about these cars, a lot of time went into design suspension. A friend of mine has a, a, had a BMW a couple years ago, and you know, he's one of these people asked to get the first day. You know, that first one off the lot, and the car vibrated at 55 miles an hour. Just crazy. They took it back and took them a day, and they said, well, we had to tune the suspension somewhere, and nobody in Germany drives 55. And that was the whole problem. They had some little rubber thing, and they put it on, and that was that. The other mechanical issue is too much power. Okay. A lot of people want more power. Okay. They're going to put a, you know, a, 11 inch warp motor in a, in a little car or something, and it's going to go fast, but it's more power than the car can do. It's something to be concerned about. Uh, electrical issues, respect your battery pack. You know, you might feel comfortable with it, but it still is dangerous. Disconnect it before you work on it. Never work on anything while it's charging. 
a lot of chargers, probably most chargers, aren't isolated from the power line. So not only do you have the battery pack voltage, you may have the whole power line voltage on top of the pack voltage while it's charging. So if you like a uh, like a Manzanita charger, there's no isolation. Um, insulate your tools. We saw all those batteries out there. If you drop a wrench in there, not only going to lose a wrench, you're probably going to lose a couple batteries in a couple weeks of time. Long sleeve shirts are not real popular here in South Florida, but and and even just those blue work gloves, those uh, the nitrile ones, it's all going to make you a little bit safer. And please never work alone. Uh, you know, you hear stories about the things that happen and the people that get stuck and everything else. Uh, Charging stations and EVs. Um, I don't know where that is. Um, you know, if you're going to go use one, look it over for damage. Look over the cable before you, you made it. Because everything's off until you made it. You know, if it's not working, if something's damaged, try to find someone to advise, be it the city, be it the, somebody in the store, the mall. Maybe they're not going to do anything, but at least you try. Um, unplug your car and move it when you're done. I know some places there's a, you know, you can't unplug somebody else's car and things like that. Um, you know. And then there's always the question about what about that ice car sitting in this spot? Anyway, I think you got to get more cars and more people who can get upset. Probably someone else, you know, but it isn't as calm as us. We need some of those people to get out there and, and get it for us. And what about unmarked 120-volt uh, outlets? You know, if you find one someplace, you really should find somebody to ask. If it's not labeled for EV charging, you really should ask, can I plug in here? Can I use your electricity? It's just kind of a, a you know, a polite thing to do. <coughs> Um, when, you ha when you're at your charging station, this one looks kind of goofy to me. I don't know where I got this picture because it looks like there's no place to park. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, make sure that when you put your cable here, you put it someplace where it's obvious somebody's not going to trip over it, you know, and it, it makes sure it's laying on the ground and things like that. When you're done, put the cable back. It's just kind of nice, you know, for the people who are there. Um, you know, everybody's concerned. The biggest concern that people I've talked to about having EBSEs on their property is people tripping over the cable. They don't worry about electricity. They're, they'd like the customers. They're worried about the cable. So if we can put it back, if we can be, you know, you know good EV people, put it back, try to help them reduce that risk, I think that's going to be great. And use them. Okay, there's nothing worse than just, you know, chatting up the city people to put in some of these things and then they sit their eye.